Hi, welcome to Behind the Scenes with Axiom Medical. I'm your host, Jason McQueenie. If this is the first time that you're joining us, this is a bi-weekly series where we introduce you to the people in the company that, that make this company tick. Uh, we've interviewed people from the marketing department, from HR, from uh, from all over the, the scope. And today we bring you the Director of Information Security, Linda White. Linda, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm fantastic. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. I'm in a bit of a, a, a new environment today. We're up at our Woodlands office having an all day uh, strategy meeting, if you will. Um, and so I'm in our, we built a green room here at the office uh, prior to COVID where we were gonna film a whole bunch of stuff and then it's just kind of sat here. So I'm makeshift studio uh, here up in the Woodlands uh, broadcasting live. So uh, for the regular viewers, if it looks odd, this is, uh, this is why. And I thought I would wear my shirt today that says risk happy. I did it backwards. Risk. Love it. Love it. So uh, introduce yourself. Who, who, who are you and, and you know, what do you do with the company? How long have you been with us? So on and so forth. Sure. My name is Linda White. I have been with Axiom Medical for 21 months. Uh, this June, it will be two years. I'm the Director of Information Security, uh, doing my best to help the team stay uh, the team and the company stay protected both internally through security awareness type functions, uh, externally with uh, customer attestations and customer assurance, um, making sure that we comply with what they need. That's great. And I know uh, when you came on board, uh, it was kind of a I don't want to say the term breath of fresh air, but it was nice to have uh, nice to have you come on board because you're in your personality, you're, you're, you're a very nice person, you're easy to get along with, but you're also very serious about, you know, what it is you do with the company. And, you know, maybe talk to us about your journey, how you ended up uh, in this type of role and you, when you first got into security and, and why it's important to you. Sure. Um, happy to do so. Well, first of all, I don't have the normal trajectory as most uh, security professionals do, but I'll go ahead and take you on that journey. I've been around a little while. Um, my original degree is in marketing, uh, which I dearly love, and I have a minor in management. Um, originally, I was, when I got married, I was living on a cotton farm about a thousand acre, we farmed about a thousand acres of cotton out in West Texas. And uh, I had two little babies and the school superintendent called me and he said, hey, we've got this grant money. Heard you know a little bit about computers. Would you like to network all of these Apple computers? Well, I didn't know how to do it. And so I said, no, I don't know how to do that. And he said, well, come on in anyway. We've got an engineer up here. And so I was curious. I went up there. We got them all connected with an old school daisy chain type uh, coax network. And then I learned how to run a Mac server and got all of these computers networked. I did it on my own, no pay for these underprivileged uh, students that didn't even know how to speak English. And then that grew into a full-fledged teaching position where I taught anything that dealt with business or programming, just some light programming, like with C+, um, and then also any type of technology course. Um, I taught primarily to the underprivileged uh, uh, students, which I absolutely loved. Um, so that's kind of how I got my start. From there, I launched into sits the ground floor had an opportunity um, out in West Texas to become a Cisco Networking Academy trainer for teachers, also taught students. That led me to a full-time role with Cisco Networking, Networking Academy in education where I managed four worldwide teams, all remote in the mid-2000s, uh, from Australia all the way to Florida, and we developed uh, network simulation labs. And it was totally fun and helped uh, write some labs for a, a textbook. So that was my journey. And then I kind of got into more of the regular IT function. So I've done a lot of different things. Um, so my, my journey into security was really when I got into, I was always doing firewalls, programming firewalls and switches and things like that. But then I got into a role um, in Thomson Reuters with a formal InfoSec team, learned a whole lot there as far as the formality of it. That's great. So you have a, a, lot, of uh, a lot of experience that you bring to the table. Well, I, it's very unique 
from driving a tractor to writing code for a firewall that was 60 pages. This was back in 2000. So I'm really dating myself. So. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, where in West Texas? Uh, let's see, southwest of Lubbock. Oh, okay. uh, there it was Terry County. Oh, okay. Kind of close there's... to New Mexico. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't think I've been to that part of Texas. I'm actually heading out to the Big Bend area in a few oh, weeks yeah. myself. Beautiful. So I love West Texas. I, I did Beautiful. go a little bit up north of I-10 to some um, towns that have, you know, had, had uh, industries leave and mm -hmm. you know, you've got um, sort of schoolhouses that are just been sitting there for 60 years. Mm -hmm. uh, I love that type of thing. But so uh, how did you end up coming to be with us at Axiom Medical? Prior to Axiom Medical, I was the director of security for UiPath, which is robotic process automation. Um, it was a startup. Uh, I was there for seven months, which felt like 18 months building out a full enterprise security function throughout that company. Um, and then they had a sudden downsizing. Um, I took a little bit of time off. And during that time, uh, my husband unexpectedly passed away, which was a huge hurdle. And um, after that, just uh, decided to jump back into things and landed it at Axiom. Well, I know we're we're happy to have you. Um, you you bring a level of um, there's a level of calm uh, when you talk about security. There's def definitely a level of fear that comes with that, but you bring a level of calm to the position. And, and I know, you know, talking to people that have worked with you and, and they just they just rave about what, when they have to work with you. Uh, one of the things that you brought into the the, the company is uh, your sneaky emails of trying to catch people uh, to, you know, uh, make sure that they're on, the, on their toes for security. So I was wondering if, you know, if we can talk about that, if that's, you know, going a little too bit behind the, the curtain, but I know that you love yep. to uh, create these sneaky emails to trip people up to make sure that they're, they're staying on their toes. That's called a phishing campaign. Most companies have them. Uh, they occur periodically throughout the year. Um, they're supposed to be sneaky. Um, and it's really to make sure and to reinforce those basic phishing guidelines for all of the employees because it, we need a security team is not just one person. You guys had security before I was on board. It even went beyond Jason Miner, who was instrumental in, in, uh, instrumental in security here. But uh, it takes everyone. Um, everyone needs to be a cyber hero for their company and help protect the company uh, internally and externally. So, uh, but the phishing emails are designed to um, to educate, really, um, not to gotcha, but really to educate and to allow people to step back and think about, um, you know, what's happened, if that makes sense. Makes complete sense. And, you know, I'm, I'm no spring chicken. Uh, so I've, I've been around a while and, and I take pride on the fact where I'm like, okay, that's definitely a phishing email, but you got me a couple weeks ago, you got me. And I felt bad about that. Cause it was, it was a, a, an e a supposed email from Dara Wheeler about something I'm like, this seems like it could not be phishing. And sure enough, I clicked on it and got the warning that said, you dodo head, what are you doing? So that was great. Well, so, mm -hmm. So growing up in West Texas, you 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 raised cotton. Uh, I don't know if that's the right term uh, yes. that you would say. Uh, you know, talk to us about that. What what was that like? Oh my goodness. Uh, well, let me go go back a little bit. I was raised in Houston in a suburban area called Spring Branch Memorial Suburban Area of Houston. So I went from there to A&M, Texas A&M and College Station, met my husband and then went out to uh, West Texas a little bit. So I went from suburban Houston all the way to this little bitty town that's uh, is about 500 people. So definite culture shock, lived out on the farm in a 10 by 60 trailer. So, I mean, it was, I loved it. Um, I learned a lot about life and uh, mother nature, uh, and nurturing from taking seed and growing it into, you know, your crop and harvesting that um, 
it's just very, very fulfilling having to rely on mother nature and having to rely on commodity prices on the world market. A lot of things out of your control, a lot of things out of your control, but uh, just doing the best to assess your risks, which is what we do here at Axiom and is, is a primary function of any security organization is to ass- or for any organization to assess your risks and know how to mitigate your risks, that kind of thing. But I loved it. It was a great, great uh, opportunity to teach those kids that were out in that community and who were very underserved. Uh, That's probably the highlight of my life. I still have some students, some high school students come back and and tell me thank you. And I'm most proud of that. That's an amazing story. That's got to feel great. Uh, going from, I, I know Spring Branch Memorial area, going from there to, you know, the High Plains, I guess, of Texas. And mm-hmm. it's a, it's a, it's a different way of life. That's for sure. It's it a is. lot slower. It is. That's great. So when you're not, uh, you know, uh, creating phishing email campaigns and making sure that our systems are completely safe, where, where, can, where would we find Linda White on like a, a, a weekend or, or an evening? Well, first of all, I'm a lake bum. I'm a water bum. I will do anything. I mean, the water is what calms me and what soothes me. Um, Besides the water, my grandkids, I have five grandkids, uh, three in Louisiana and two in Oregon. So any opportunity I have to meet up with them, either somewhere in Texas or to go to their places, I absolutely love and enjoy doing that. Um, I have a wave runner. So a water motorcycle, as my grandkids call it. And so I like to ride on it. Um, I like to water ski. I water skied competitively at Texas A&M. That was my only, I was too small to do anything else all through my growing up years, but I did enjoy that. I've taught all my grandkids to water ski or the the older ones. Um, So that's what I like to do. And I do like to really fish. Like fish oh, for salmon on the with, Columbia River, Tillamook Bay. I like to fish for bass on Lake Livingston. Oh, that's so. great. That's amazing. So uh, mm-hmm. water skiing, like like Lake Bryan, I'm guessing? Uh, we actually, when I was at A&M, we, I guess, we went to Somerville. That's where I had my tryout. And then we had a rancher that was up between Houston and Dallas, and he donated his lake. We had a uh you know the jump ramp the slalom course um and then a trick course i did slalom and trick i failed at jump but that's where we went for competitions i mean when we hosted but i went all over i every time i talk to you i'm learning so so many new amazing (laughs) things like are there any video Mm -hmm. or photos of this can we oh yes see you in action not right now but (laughs) but yes i do i do have some and uh, truth be told, I mean, it wasn't that hard. I grew up on a, on a lake pretty much. And so it was slalom just came natural to me. So they needed girls, you know, mm-hmm. they needed girls for those team points. So that's, that's okay. I had fun. Well, I want to show some uh, comments that we've been getting uh, sure. over. And Christy says, Linda's not only our uh, normal information security director, she's out of the box thinking and old school learning from the School of Hard Knocks, which makes her makes security interesting and safe. Uh, and she adores you. I think uh, that I think everybody kind of adores you there. Dara says, way to go, Linda. <laughs> and, and Dara mm-hmm. follows up, said, love how she makes us safe, making it interesting for us to understand the why. And that's really the big thing with these phishing emails is uh, you know, talking to people in the company that are watching or that are going to watch this later. Um, there's a whole purpose be- behind these emails that you get. It's just to make sure that you're on your toes because they're, as much as we would love to have a world full of great people, there just aren't great people out there. No, and with the current world situation, uh, with continued chaos and disruption, uh, I'm a member of InfraGuard, which is a civilian group of the FBI. There's just more to come. It's going to get worse. I'm afraid to say. Um, so, yeah, so, that's another thing I've I've learned. You're you're part of the FBI. Uh, it, it's called InfraGuard. I've been a part of it for about seven or eight years. Uh, it's through the FBI, and some information I can share, some I can't. But it's a it's a great group. They have InfraGuard chapters all over the country. Wow, that's wild. So, that's interesting. 
it's, it's you guys weird. aren't watching me when I'm like ordering little Debbie's off Amazon, are you? No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> there may be other countries that do, but yeah, but not us. Uh, I said oh. this was uh, Adara. Sorry, Christy, that was Christy who said that loves how you keep us safe. And Anthem, who we in interviewed last time, she says uh, he says he's a lake bum as well. Yeah, oh, cool. Cool. Uh, Texas does have, I was talking to someone the other day, um, Autumn, I think, Autumn Brennan, our communications director, telling her a fact that I learned when I first came to Texas is Texas, the largest state in the lower 48, there's only one natural lake in the entire state. And all of the other ones are human made. I just thought mm -hmm. that was, that was wild. That is I'm wild. From, yeah. I'm from Ontario, where Ontario, mm -hmm. Canada, where there's like 10,000 lakes. There's lakes on yeah. top of lakes. Yeah, there's so, a bunch. Mm -hmm. uh, what does the future hold for Linda? What's, uh, what, what do you see happening? I will continue to work. I will continue to be very passionate about security. Um, I'm not as technical as I used to be. I really like more of the thinking part, the strategic part of security. Um, I will continue to, I'm a mentor for women in cybersecurity. It's a nonprofit. So I will continue to mentor there. Last year, I mentored four females. One was actually in Guatemala. This year, I'm just mentoring one uh, lady that's in Florida that's had a mid life change in careers um, after some personal situations. Um, I will continue to volunteer with um, the Girl Scouts. Uh, they have some cybersecurity badges there. And so I'll continue to, uh, you know, have that opportunity to do that. Um, just that's, and the secret is I'm, secretly everybody says these words but i'm really i'm sort of writing a book my kids say no mom you're writing a book I, and it's not a book for like amazon or anything like that it's a book for my kids and my grandkids uh there have been a lot of things that i've overcome as a female and just in life in general some of life challenges and i want them documented so that i'm hoping that i'm blazing the path for my daughters and granddaughters today that's amazing that's that's fantastic i can't i can't wait to see uh how that progresses and i'm sure you know uh being in the IT security field as as a as a woman um, can be uh, or could be maybe still is tough because um, it's definitely a, a male dominated industry it seems. It is, but it's getting better. And what I see females bringing to the table is uh, just more of a just more of a creative out of the box approach in general. Um, I'm speaking just in general, but um, but I'm I'm seeing that and more of a team building type aspect um, because we we can be nurtured. I'm a very nurturing person, so um, that's that's just one of my gifts and empathy, all of that as well. Um, I wanted to share some. I mean, not to get like real serious here, but I have a and I can't find it at the moment because I've moved. But when I started a job in probably in 2000, when I got my biggest kickstart out of the classroom and into a government type job where I was managing internet and network services for 57 school districts in the panhandle, I told myself, I can't do this. What have I done? I couldn't believe I got hired. Uh, my mom gave me this little piece of paper that I've had. I used to have six monitors up and I put it on one of my monitors and I'm going to read it to you. Um, I wish I could show it to you. It is one of the most beautiful compensations in life that no man can sincerely try to help another without helping himself. And that's by Ralph Waldo Emerson. The reason I have that up um, and I refer to it quite often, not just because my mom gave it to me, when I get really frustrated, which I used to get frustrated a lot having to talk to school superintendents because they always pointed the finger to me. What had I done? What had I done? Their network was down. That produced that calmness, knowing if I can talk this individual off the ledge, if I can do anything to make this person's life 
better and just help them in this moment, then, then that's a win. And I feel like I'm a success for that day. And when I help others, I help myself and it makes me grow. Really corny, but that's, I just want to share that. That's not corny at all. That is something I think everybody should as, uh, aspire to be. Um, uh, you know, you seem like the kind of person that likes to give back in many different facets. Um, you know, you love to share your knowledge, be able to share your empathy uh, to make the world a better place. And I think we all need to aspire to be that way, given the current climate of things. Yes. Uh, which would lead me to Dara's next comment. Said, mm -hmm. uh, Linda is an inspiring professional and we love having her at Axiom. Thank you for everything, Linda. Well, you're welcome. It, it's a Linda love fest. <laughs> <laughs> so um, mm -hmm. any tips and tricks you would, you would tell anybody out there when it comes to internet security, uh, things they should do, shouldn't do, look out for? Well, there's so many. Um, the first thing that I can think of is the phishing. Uh, be very careful with your with your email and you know clicking on uh, links that look suspicious, um, opening attachments, that type of thing. That that's the first thing. And the second thing would be do practice multi-factor authentication in every place possible um, in your personal life as well as Axiom. And in your personal life, if you can get hold of a patch password manager. I know we've talked about that before, like Dashlane or FastPass or something like that, where you only have one password and it stores all the passwords encrypted for you. That would be helpful. Um, and just being willing to be open-minded and learn and be agile and, and keep your brain open to fill in new information because the landscape, our threat landscape, security, technology is changing just like the air we breathe. I mean, it's just changing constantly. So try not to get overwhelmed and think, oh, I'm too old to learn this. I'm too old to do this, or I just don't feel like doing this or whatever. Mm -mm. Just be agile. It's a journey. Just think of it as a river. I mean, just you just have to, you know, keep yourself apprised, but don't don't worry. Wise words for sure. Um, so let's let's wrap it up here. Um, okay. Anything else you want to share with the world? Anything else you want to tell people? Um, any type of insights you you want to impart? I'm going to say something about Axiom, if that's okay. Yeah. Um, what I am, and I've been around the block, I've been in lots of different situations. Axiom has, I'm a servant leader, and I learned that in one of my master's programs. So that really melted well with, with the way I think. Servant leadership, from that you get camaraderie, and number one, you get trust. When you have trust amongst your team members, and then you can also extend that to your customers, I mean, the sky's the limit. You're going to be highly more productive. Your customers are going to give you more business. And that's that's the great thing about Axiom. I have not always experienced that. So very happy to be here. It's true. I, I've worked. Uh, I, I'm not going to throw anyone under the bus, but I've, I've been in other situations where something like that hasn't happened. So, uh, you know, we walk the walk and talk the talk here, which is great. Yeah. Uh, we have another comment here. It says, I always look forward to meeting with Linda on her security initiatives and love of how she makes the trainings fun. I think that may be autumn. I'm not sure. Um, all right. Well, um, thank you so much for joining us, uh, Linda. I feel like uh, we could talk to you for uh, hours and, and just learn more and more great things about you. But uh, we got to cut it short here. And I want to thank you for coming on. Uh, and to everyone else that's watched, um, thank you for dropping by. Thank you for having me.